that's not again something that uh, could necessarily happen in the future. You never know. It's a job of a wrestling until he's physically unable to move. Like then somebody's running WWE until he can't. He's not alive anymore. Like John will never stop. He's such a machine. Now, obviously, you were a part of the you know brand extension when it was just Raw and SmackDown, and I think you were also there when they decided to combine both brands. Do you have a preference on which one you know benefited people more, or do you think both benefited each other in a certain way? Well, obviously, like Raw is the boss's baby; it's got a larger audience, so more exposure. So if you were on you know, Raw, you got more of that exposure, but uh, at the time it was fun because there was a little rivalry we had, like Raw and SmackDown, and we always prided ourselves, like Taker was our leader, on uh, challenging them at the ratings and challenging them for uh, like house show attendances, so we were thought the competition, which the company wins if we see that way, like same with the Monday Night Wars and the competition, things get excited and we made it a bit of a competition which brought everybody's game up uh, dramatically, and that's what really does help business. Unfortunately, it's going to be a long time with the you know, building people that would have eaten. It's like, I always say, like, hey, my opinion is nobody should try and get people to just create your own thing, work together, and, and everyone's got a little competitive thing going on with the, as I say, the ROH is the TNA, so which is underground, which underground, and even the in-ring matches, you can think that way with WWE, so I compete with them in that sense, and rather than just trying to get second rate, just create your own thing, and things are just fantastic right now the independent scenes and the like, UK where I'm at right now is unbelievable America's unbelievable we're a good country I travel and most countries have got a good thing going on but the buzz right now is great like I wouldn't be surprised if we're due a modern day boom period of the, the possible to get the ratings used to get back in the day to the nature of TV now <coughs> with the internet etc but uh, I think we're due the modern day boom period because I can see it the rest one is on fire everywhere right now if given the opportunity, would you work with WWE again? Never say never. As I said already, I'm just so happy. Like right now, I've been so lucky and fortunate. So you want to say, I just turned, I was 29. And everyone was like, oh, and they gave me so much exposure. People could see, I mean, they saw me in a serious role, could see I could dress, so it was always creative. And they saw me in a completely different role. And because of that exposure, I had the opportunity to be able to go around the world. I also had friends back home and companies that were doing well and gave the polls to the Evolve Booker uh, saw a promo I did in Scotland in my return which was all part of my plan my mission statement I wanted to get out there I said I'm going to go here first I'm going to go here first he gave me the title the Evolve title which is the company with the best in-ring performers in the entire planet like it's the who's who and I was on last every time imagine being on last the company with the best high flyers technical wrestlers every style you want are all on before you so that was a challenge and a challenge I was excited about I really got to show the world what I could do being in that situation and traveling around the world winning the tough game that England's title got right now. They're five and three continents right now. But the company's putting their faith in me to represent them and I take the country titles around the world and get um, eyes on the company like ICW in Scotland and Evolve especially. Educate people about them and be the face of the company something I'm very proud of. Proud to be a champion and obviously my big goal right now is winning that TNA title. <coughs> when I get another opportunity that's the plan. And I'm planning to be the first traveling world champion to drink from there. Um, so well on the way so far, and that's thanks to people's belief in the fans' belief in me. You left uh, WWE, and you go to do a lot of the independent things. You've mentioned Evolve, you mentioned all these other indie promotions. And then TNA comes to the UK, and they obviously call you up. Was it supposed to be a one-time deal, or was this going to be like a long-term expansion uh, contract? I wouldn't mention how long it was, but it wasn't long. It wasn't just the UK dates. But initially, like I told uh, the big, they called me. Uh, I'm not looking to be an American TV right now. And he pretty much told me we're not taking no for an answer. Or, this is the situation. This is how your TV, live events, you'll still be able to keep your commitments to the companies that helped you so far. We are not asking you to be anything different and weird character. We just want to bring in Drew Galloway, let Drew Galloway be Drew Galloway and give him a microphone, which I hadn't had in such a long time. I'm not saying I'm the world's greatest talker, but it's just <laughs> you know, help to be able to uh, let fans know what you're thinking and what you're all about. And that was a big thing for me, being able to um, have that weapon of a microphone as well as my wrestling, which is my, I guess, number one thing in most people's minds, including my own. Um, and he let, literally stuck to his word, let me be myself, and uh, things have been going really 
well and keep your eye on television over the next few weeks because some really cool stuff is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks uh, with the GFW uh, storyline won't spoil anything but I think the exciting there's some big exciting hard hit matches coming up yeah, I think that was the one thing that kept me so interested in you, was that when you came back and you had the microphone, you were talking about, you know, taking back the world of professional wrestling and, you know, creating hashtag stand up. It's one of those things where you were just such a relatable character because so many people were, you know, thinking the exact same way as you that they really wanted to see, you know, pro wrestling get back on top and not have, you know, all these, you know, I don't know if I want to say corny or kind of like cheesy gimmicks, but they wanted to see something real like what you had, and I think that was really cool that you were one of the few that actually, you know, went out and, you know, spoke your mind, and that's, I think, one of the things that helped you got over. Thank you, and it's not a character again, like, they gave me, get the the two we have, but the writers put together these awesome storylines and stuff, but they gave me a script, and they said, you know, these are the ideas, so just do what you want, and they let me say how I want and do it, like I want essentially in the promos, just so I can do it and be myself, and that's, but they literally said, give me a microphone in the UK shows, and went out and said, well, this is how I feel. But people responded to it, which was cool, and it felt the same. I was just pretty much saying, let's, you know, let's, let's wrestle, can we wrestle? <laughs> so I was just looking to say, because it's how I feel. And I'm a huge wrestling fan, I always have been my whole life, and I always think like a wrestling fan. I tried to think like a wrestling fan rather than, you know, a wrestler in a bubble. It's just like, oh, if you don't like it, then screw them. I'm always like, all right, well, if you want to like it, that's why is that? And I just spoke my mind, and people, thankfully felt the same, which is cool, because I really, really believe in everything I say. Um, and hopefully that comes across that way, because it's not fake, it's not a story. It was awesome, people started reacting, I was, you know, hearing it in buildings, and I was like, wow, this is so cool, not just get a reaction or get over whatever you want to say, it's just like, seeing this stuff and believing it, and they're with me, that's the coolest feeling ever, that everybody's on the same page, and that's the page of wrestling, I guess, without making it sound crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who came up with the idea for the rising in TNA? Yeah, that's something we spoke about in the initial conversation. And um, so it's like another group coming together eventually. I didn't know who was going to be in it, etc. But it was, uh, again, we didn't really have a story like as such. It talked about it. it was just, you know, the like MVP's group. We're going to go into something with them. And pretty much we're just going to let you be you. And that was the business and kind of group coming together. And that's the basics of it. And the big thing for me was. You can still do your commitments to people that felt you. These are the, the way that schedule works, and we're gonna let you be yourself. That was enough to sell me. And then, like I told, like recently, you know, everything you told me to say happened times a million. Really have just, you know, put your faith in me and let me go with it. And put me the ball multiple times, and hopefully, I scored the touchdown a couple of times. Well, you you said that you didn't know who was gonna be a part of it. Did you have any ideas on who could be the, at least the two people that would be by your side? I had absolutely no idea. I didn't ask either. And the other thing is, like, a lot of guys want to know what's happening, what they're doing, so they can think about it, like, the day before or the week before or whatever. I said, I always just wait. I said, I don't want them to tell me. I just like to come on TV and find out what's going on that day and just go with it. So usually my, my first reaction is uh, the way to go. So I don't like to know about it the night before because I just sit awake thinking about my match or whatever situation I'm in. So I had no idea, like, till the day, uh, pretty much. Did you have any... Uh... Well, you mentioned you want to be, you know, TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Of course, the current champion is EC3, who is, you know, undefeated, unbeatable, un, you know, for, forgettable, as he likes to say. Uh, EC3 on camera, of course, is probably one of the biggest heels in TNA. Off camera, is he any different, or does he stick to the character? <laughs> he stuck to the character. I think he's getting punched left and right backstage because he's so good at it. Uh, no, he's a, he's a good guy. No, I wouldn't say any more because I know he doesn't like people saying nice things about him. But he's a good guy. He's very, very good at his character. I should say that. Like, he's very, very entertaining. A very, very believable back in it. Yeah, back in uh, uh, when he first came in NXT and WWE, he was uh, Derek Bateman, kind of like the goofball. And then to see him just evolve from that to this, you know, this incredible heel, incredible athlete. And honestly, I, I said a while back that I compared him and Seth Rollins because once they had the interference factor taken out and have everybody taken out of ringside, that they really kind of showed their wrestling ability and they really put on like, like you know, really hell of a good matches. And I think, you know, EC3 is definitely one of those guys that I look at and say, you know, he's got potential. 
just needs to find it and needs to find that right person. And, you know, definitely when, you know, you two faced off, it was one of those matches that definitely stood out as one, one of his matches that, you know, that he's arrived, even though, you know, the ending would have been nice to have it clean instead of the, was it, uh, I think it was Eli Drake was the one who, who turned on you? I'm yeah, not yeah. Gonna... Yeah. Um, was it kind of hard to deal with, you know, the rising kind of coming to an end? Because it seemed like you guys just, you know, got in. You guys just came, came in, and I think it was only lasted for a while. But then you guys, as soon as you guys got together, it was like, okay, we're going to separate you guys. Was that really hard to work with, or was that one of those things that you wanted to happen? No. I just go with the flow in wrestling. Um, I guess, like, uh, with the Eli and the promos. You know, like, I think you could just tell, even when we're doing the, he's still a good guy. But you could see, like, he's got a, a little bit of heel in him, I guess, is the way he put it. I don't know if any other else, because I could see certainly watching. And he did a great job and drive. He's an incredible talker. Um, but I think you could always see, like, man, if this guy was heel, it'd be interesting. And then, like, once we started the program, he started. And doing the promos as a heel, I went, ah, that's, that I saw that I was hoping would be there once we started the case. Uh, yeah, he was very good at talking. Yeah, that's all of it. Um, very, very talented you. Is there anybody that you would like to face in TNA in the near future? Do you see a few for the time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, there's lots of people. Um, the Kurt Angle is going to be back. Um, Matt, I have, I have not had a match yet. We used to have the, the big feud in WWE, it lasted about a year. Um, on TV and house shows. Uh, Jeff, when he's healthy again, somebody the big fan of when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I also have a, I don't know, Austin Aries. Um, I know he's technically not there, but he was there at the last show. So like, you never know. There's going to be coming and going, even if they're not supposed to be there. You know, Bram and I face, it's going to be a Heck of a war. Uh, Lashley, big lad. I like big battles as well. It's fighting the high flyers. Oh, God, I'm just messing people out here. Pretty much the whole roster. You look at that roster, and there's pretty much everybody on it. Like, is there because they can go in the ring. Like, it's a wrestler's wrestler company, and everybody can go in. Every match brings a different challenge. It's unique. And that's what I enjoy most about wrestling is no match is ever the same, especially the new one, though. Well, I'm sure the TNA roster appreciates, you know, your your generosity and your, you know, your humbleness to face every single one of them. And I think it's going to be not only a matter of time, but I think it's going to happen eventually. But uh, you mentioned Austin Aries, who just left, you know, TNA, according to, you know, how the tapings are going. And now he's going back to Ring of Honor. Did you have any interest of going there? Absolutely, I have interest of going to get anywhere with the talented roster. And I spoke to many, many people, many companies and many countries um, as well. And, things that may happen in the future. Um, but yeah, it's an incredibly talented roster. And I um, wish nothing but success for everybody who's trying to make a dent in wrestling like that. The more everybody succeeds, the more we're going to succeed. Like wrestlers, wrestling, and the fans are going to succeed. And they have an awesome roster, and I'm glad they've got some mainstream attention now. SNH America has become you know, the wrestling network. And there's a couple of kill ghost shows on it, so, which I'm into as well, so it's a cool network. Watch if you get it. If you don't have it, get it. Do you have anybody on the Ring of Oster that's kind of in your eye? You mentioned Austin Aries. Is there anybody that really, you know, stands out to you that's just like, I think I could do something with this guy. I think that, you know, having a match with him would be awesome. Well, I know this guy would be tough. He followed it four times. I had a few the past year, which really, another thing that helped build my reputation as well was. The Drew guy is not just a guy who looks apart for wrestling, he can actually go in the ring. There's Roderick Strong, I mean, I have been battling and evolved for over a year. He's just an unbelievable performer and probably could be the best in the world if I wasn't good for that rope to help myself. But he is absolutely phenomenal in the ring, can wrestle anybody, and you know, he's a hard, and uh, I say that's already said it, but leave me out. But uh, you know, we fight, we fight, and then we try and keep it innovative, unique, and we don't say much beforehand. We just kind of go out there and go for it. And even somebody that talented, it's really fun and great some magic. And him and I have created magic many times in a bow. 
Now, kind of, kind of switching gears again, I apologize if I throw you off.